Hello and God bless you young people. My name is Reverend Jared Reed Smith and I'm a minister here at the Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church where my pastor is Dr. Johnny Calvin Smith. Young people, happy new year, 2022. We thank God for each and every one of you all. I hope that you've enjoyed all of your time off. I know some of you all still have a few more days next week that you're going to be off. So enjoy it while it lasts. Get you some sleep. Get ready uh, to go back to school. Remember to stay safe. Do whatever you have to do to stay safe. Remember to read your Bible each and every day. Remember to pray each and every day. And remember to do those things that are pleasing in God's sight. God bless you, young people. We're not going to be very long, but I want to get into our word. But I just want to wish everyone a happy new year. And I wish you nothing but the best. Okay, let's finish this school year out strong. But before we get into our word, let's pray. Gracious God, we do say thank you. Thank you for these young people. Heavenly Father, I pray that you just bless them. Lord, please keep them safe. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. All right, young people, our lesson for today comes from the book of John. John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 11. And then our lesson topic is the way, the truth, and the life. And then I also always like to read for you your golden text, and that's John chapter 14, verse 6. And that's where we get our lesson topic from. It says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now, in our lesson today, I want to kind of catch us up from last week. Last week, we saw how Jesus washed the disciples' feet. We talked about humility, how Jesus... Christ was born to serve. Really? Remember, he, he did come to save, but he also came to serve. Ultimately, Jesus Christ was God. We all know that. He was always in control, but he did a lot of things that would make you think that he really wasn't in control. You know, or he was a very humble person. And if you remember our lesson for last week, we talked about having humility. That means that we put other people uh, th their wants and their needs above ours. So, you know, it's like if you're hungry, but you know someone else is hungry, where you let them eat first before you eat. That's just a small example. Jesus was a very humble person. And in chapter 13, he washed his disciples' feet. Now, remember, in chapter 13, he's dealing with those that were going to betray him. They were going to do him wrong people that doubted him. They didn't really believe that he was who he said he was. He also dealt with someone that was going to deny him. That means someone's going to ask him, do you know this person? And this person named Peter is going to say, nope, I don't know him. And so he's dealt with all of this, all the time still serving the people and he still washed their feet. He was just showing humility. He was just showing kindness and love towards them. And now we get into chapter 14 and Jesus has dealt with that. He's dealt with the denials and the betrayals. He's told them about uh, the abandonment and all the other things that's going to happen to him. And he knows all of this is going to happen to him, but he still looks around and he looks at his disciples as they're in this upper room. Uh, this uh, just think about it as a, just a special room that they were in, just a just a very special room. And it was a very private situation. And he's with these people that he's been with all of his ministry, the people that have seen him heal the sick and raise the dead. But Jesus knew that it was time for him to die on the cross of Calvary. And of course, after he dies on the cross, he knows that he's going to be leaving them. And the disciples, his closest people around him, they really did not understand it. They didn't understand it. I don't know why they had been around Jesus this whole time, but they did not understand. And so Jesus looks around and he sees them and maybe their faces looked a little sad or whatever. So Jesus opens up chapter 14 and he tells them, please don't be sad. He says, let not your heart be troubled. Don't be confused. Don't be saddened. Don't be uh, feeling some type of way because just because I'm about to leave doesn't really mean anything because he says, if you believe in God, believe also in me. If you believe that there is a God, then you ought to also believe in me. Young people, what God is trying to tell us 
through our lesson today is that when when things happen in our lives and, and whenever things happen, especially even when loved ones leave us, that we don't have to be sad. We don't have to. Now, we can be sad. Nothing wrong with being sad. But if, if we believe in God, we ought to believe so in Jesus Christ. And the same one that we believe in gives us eternal life. He says, in my father's house are many mansions. Some of you have heard this scripture read at uh, funerals and other things like that in burial sites when someone has passed away. Well, Jesus is letting them know that I have a prepared place for you. He says, in my father's house are many mansions. Guess what, young people? When we leave here, however we leave here, we have a prepared place for us. And that's in heaven. We have somewhere to go. And he says, so if it were not so, if, if I wasn't telling you the truth, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say anything. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. It, he, he went away. He's leaving his disciples to go and prepare this place for them. And he says, and I'm not just going to go away, but I'm also going to come again. Verse three. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'm not just going to send for you. I'm going to come and get you for myself. Young people, guess what? Should we all continue to live here on earth and we don't die? You know, unfortunately, that's a part of life. Should we all just live here one day? We don't know when. It's called the rapture. The Lord himself, Jesus Christ, is going to come and he's going to receive us unto himself. That's what he's saying in the text. He's not going to go away and prepare a place for us and then just send somebody else. Oh, um, let, let somebody else go get them. I love them, but let someone No, Jesus Christ is saying, I love them this much. I love them this much and they believe on me. So I'm going to go away, prepare a place for them. And guess what? When I am ready for them, I will come again and I will receive them unto myself. Well, how is that going to happen, Reverend Jared? Well, I'm glad you asked that the Bible tells us that one day, we don't know when, Jesus Christ is going to come and he's going to stop in the midair. Just look out the window. I got a window next to me. And just one day, Jesus is just going to stop in the midair. I, I, can't, I can't tell you any more than what the Bible tells you, but it's just, it blows my mind that one day, Jesus is just going to stop in the midair. And then so we all that are his children, that means we believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We're going to be raptured. We're going to be caught up to be with him out of nowhere, whether you're driving a car, whether you're sitting in school or wherever you are, if you believed in Jesus Christ, he says that I'm going to come again and I'm going to receive you unto myself. And why am I doing this? Because where I am, there ye shall be also. Wherever I am, I want you there with me. I want you there with me. And so one of the one of the disciples named Thomas, he says, well, we don't understand what you're talking about in verse five. He says, we have no idea. How are we supposed to know the way to get there? You says that you say that where you are, there we may be also. How are we going to get there is what Thomas is saying. How are we going to know the way? Well, Jesus answers Thomas and he says it like this. I am the way. Young people, please, as you continue to grow up, I can't say this enough. Please be careful of people that try to tell you that there's more than one way to get to God. Or there's more than one way to get to heaven. Jesus Christ is telling you in John chapter 14, verse six. If you have your Bible, highlight it. If you have it on your phone, uh, do that fancy thing where you can highlight it in the app. Do something so you'll know what Jesus Christ is telling you today. He says in chapter 14, verse six, I am the way, not your friends, not your family, not your mom, not your dad, not your pastor, not your minister, not Reverend Jared, not any other person. He says, I am the way. How do you get to salvation? How do you get to the father? How do you get to heaven? You must come by Jesus Christ. He says, I am the way. I wish we could stop right there, but he goes on to say, not only am I the way, I am the way in which you get there. If you want to get to this point, you have to come through me. He says, I am the truth. I am that word of truth. I am the life. I am the giver of life. Then he says, no man 
coming to the Father. You, it can be the richest man in the world having a hundred billion dollars. It can't buy you salvation. It can't buy you to get to the father. The only way we come to the father is through the son, Jesus Christ. He says, no man coming to the father, but by me. Young people, please don't allow anyone to make you think that they can, that you can get to the father any other way. You must come through the son. And I'll tell you the reason why, because the father and the son are one. They are two separate people with separate responsibilities, but they are really one. And that's why when Philip uh, is about to ask a question in verses seven and eight, Philip says, Jesus helps them to understand that he and the father are one. Philip says, show us the father. Well, guess what? If you're looking at the son, you see the father. I and the father are one. They are one because they were always one. Remember, young people, just because Jesus came down to earth to do his ministry does not mean that he still was not in charge. He had all of the power. That's why he was able to do those wonderful miracles, right? Healed the sick raised the dead, fed 5,000, fed 4,000, walked on water, turned water into wine, right? Did all of these wonderful miracles. That's because he and the father were always one. And that's what we have to remember. If you don't remember anything from this lesson, know that you're saved because you believe in Jesus Christ. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. How can I believe on Jesus Christ? How can I understand that I really believe in Jesus Christ? Well, I'm turning to Romans 6 and 23 right now, and I want to read it to you. 6 and 20, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm turning to Romans, oh, sorry, I messed up. Romans 10, 9 and 10. That's the scripture I want. Romans 10, 9 and 10. How do I know that I'm saved? How do I know that I've gone through Jesus Christ to get to the Father? How do I know that I am saved and have salvation? Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved, says verse 9. So how am I saved? I believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that's how I know I've gone through the way, the truth, and the life. I've gone through Jesus Christ because I believed in Jesus Christ. That's how I get to the Father. The reason and the way that you and I can pray to God right now is through Jesus Christ. That's how we can pray right now. That's how we can uh, go to the Father and we can ask for certain things is because we have believed in Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad, young people, that you know right now without a shadow of a doubt that you have salvation? How do you know it? Because you believed in Jesus Christ. Why do you believe in Jesus Christ? Why is that? Because he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. God bless you, young people. We will be back this Wednesday, 6 p.m. on our Zoom call. All right, I want you to let you know that. And also, please know on Sunday morning, also with your family, whether in person or at home, join us for morning worship. God bless you, young people. Have a great week.